second strategy to implement dynamic dispatching that you see is type directed one. The idea behind it is that by looking at the first operation of a bind, we might be able to figure out what is the appropriate bind that we should be choosing. So the dispatching of the actual bind function is done with respect to the type of the first. But herein comes a problem. The problem is, so far, what is our O1 for each of these three cases? Well, for the first case is a list. For the case where, for the list monad, the operation one would be a list. That's easy enough. But if you remember how EFF bind works, your O1 is going to be a function that takes the memory and then does something with the memory, right? So in this case, we would have, it, it's not very obvious how we could query if a function is of a given type that we are interested in. In Racket, because that is not very obvious how you should do that, instead, we just have to use structures as we've been using in our uh, AST to be able to tag kinds of values. So our functions, what we're going to do is just gonna, we're going to store them in a struct. And when we think about optionals, where the value could be something or false, that is also a problem because what is the type of that it really depends on what is the value. So we also need to wrap that value in a struct. And I'm going to show you how to wrap the values into structs and then how to implement bind for this new effect and then bind for optional values. So wrapping a function with a struct is very easy. Just call struct and then effectful operation. Just give it a name. And the field is going to be the function that we're going to store. So what we do, I, I assign the type just to make it a bit more clear. So O1, the first argument, is going to be what? It's going to be an effectful operation. And as we know, operation O2 is the continuation. So what is the continuation? Continuation is something that takes the result that was obtained from, from evaluating the first parameter and then that should return an effectful operation that is then returned as the final value of bind. So what bind returns is an effectful operation, right? We are combining two effectful operations. So that's why the return value is an effect. And the code that you see here is almost the same as before, but the only difference is that before O1 was a function and now it's a struct that contains a function. So we need to unwrap it when we need to call the field func from uh, object 01 or from structure 01. And we need to do that in the two cases where we have effectful operations, which are 01 and then the continuation, which is just a factory of effective operations. And therefore we call, we call the field func of struct mu. So the difference is not big and it really doesn't matter what is going on here. But I just want you to get the intuition is that since we have no way of getting a, val a type of a particular value because an effectual operation is just a lambda, um, we wrap such a lambda in a struct and, and then just need to pack it and unpack it. That's what. That's the difference between EFF bind and EFF bind 2, which is highlighted. In. So we need to redefine pop, push, and multiplication. Uh, in this case, I just wanted to give you an example of how we define uh, bind. And actually, let me show you code, and then we'll actually pause for OK, so I'm showing you basically a new definition of the do notation. And now the do notation calls the generic type-directed bind. And how is the generic type de directed bind defined? It's defined here, actually. So 
So the bind just calls the dele whenever you call a arrow, it will call the ty bind. And what ty bind does, it looks at the type of O1, and depending on the type, it will dispatch it to the actual implementation. So this is why this is known as dynamic dispatching. Here, the dispatching is happening according to the type. That's basically what I want you to do. And then, of course, we need to change the implementation a bit. And I want to go through just the implementation. So that here. Sorry, I had to pause the video. Someone was calling me. Where was I? So effectful bind two. Now two. This is what I just showed you in the slides. Uh, I have to redefine pop and push and molt. I just wanted to give you an example of using the do notation of effectful operations. But to do so, I wanted to write the example of our stack machine. This is the stack machine example. So the only difference is that we are wrapping function pop that we defined first for EFFs and we're wrapping it with EFF up and we do the same with push very trivial and now when we call when we use the macro we have to use the wrapped versions version 2 of both as you can see if I run this code previous called Out code and I run it. See, okay, so I get six void. Why? Because I push two and three, so my stack is initialized with two and three. I'm doing two pops and a push, so the final result is the result of a push, which is void here. And the stack now has holds just the number six, which is the result of the multiplication of two by three. As you can see. This is still working as expected and what I wanted to again just summarize what we did in this type directed implementation type directed dynamic dispatching the sent the dispatching algorithm is actually performed in this tie bind so it's a bind that chooses the implementation of what bind will do according to the type of the first parameter because we need types to characterize the input, we need to wrap our inputs with some structure so that we get a unique type for each input, for each kind of monad value that we're handling. Uh, and that is very similar to what we did with values. So as you remember, in our uh, interpreter, we don't actually use directly numbers. We wrap them in a struct that has a number because of the same reason. But here we can actually take the type to our advantage and kind of implement the dispatching of the effect. And then what I showed you was the bind operation. And I showed you how to change our stack machine example and ran it. It gave us the same input. That is all fine. Um, if we want to implement also the air handler code, we would have to, again, wrap the value with the struct. And what we can do is now we have a value there. We need to check if it's an optional. And if it is, if there's a false inside of it, then you return false. Otherwise, you take the contents of the struct and you pass it along. So the implementation of bind, now I just call it a different name. I call it OP rather than ERR, just to signify the fact that I'm struct here so in summary this is what we have we have this type directed dynamic dispatching um, we have two limitations that i am identifying now the first one is that we have no way of implementing pure because if you think about it there is no argument to pure pure is just going to be the value that you're going to wrap and make it Make it an effectful thing. So, because you don't have access to the effectful operation, you have no way of 
defining a generic pure function, which is uh, upsetting. In programming languages that use monads, they actually have compiler support, and because of that, they are able to infer which func which implementation of pure they should use. Right? But because we are in a dynamic setting, we don't have that facility. Facility is the compiler support. The other limitation that we have is, let's say you want to add a new monad. If you have a new monad, you would have to rewrite or change this code somehow. Um, the code of tie bind, right? And it could be a problem because imagine this code was already shipped. How would you be able to change it? might just not be able to recompile that piece of code. So this is a limitation if you need extension. If you don't need extension, it's fine. Let's say I only need these three monads ever. But if I'm actually offering a library of a generic bind, then this would be a problem. So it would be really nice if we had an automatic way of registering new data types for this type-directed um, dynamic dispatching. And that's what we'll do in the next video. So we're going to learn about bracket generics, which will allow us to do implicit and automatic dynamic or bind.